Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we, take, we took a look at gene's length, the minimum diameter required for a molecular cloud or an interstellar matter to achieve enough density in order for it to collapse under the gravitational force against all the other forces trying to prevent that from happening. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the minimum critical mass required. So it's another way to look at it. So how much mass do we have in that molecular cloud and will it collapse under the force of gravity? So again, it could either be a section of the cloud or the entire cloud. If it's large enough, if it contains enough mass, it will indeed collapse. So now let's take a look at the critical mass. So again, we use the equation where the density is the ratio of mass divided by volume or the mass is the product of the density times the volume. The volume, of course, being 4 thirds pi r cubed and then if we realized that gene's length is essentially twice the radius, it's the size of the entire section of the cloud that we expect to collapse, we then replace r by gene's length divided by 2, we cube that, and then we get the following. We get the critical mass is equal to 4 times the density times the gene's mass a gene's length cubed divided by 8. Now what happened to the pi in the 3? Well since pi is approximately equal to 3 we could simply just go ahead and cancel that out. And then we could say that 4 and 8 are approximately equal, it's only a half and we want to make sure that we have at least enough of the critical mass so we can just go ahead and replace a 4 over 8 by 1 as well and so for simplicity we can say that the critical mass required should be at least the density times genes the genes length cubed I keep wanting to say mass instead of length alright so then we replace what genes length is equal to in terms of the escape velocity divided by the square root of the gravitational constant times the density. Remember we calculated that in the previous video. So if we then replace genes length by that, we get the following, we cube the escape velocity and then we have the uh, g to the 3 halves power and density to the 3 halves power but I separated it into density to the first power and density to the 1 half power because then you can see that the density of the numerator and the denominator cancel out and you're left with the escape velocity cubed divided by the gravitational constant to the 3 half power divided by the density to the 1 half power and then of course we remember that the escape velocity for monatomic gas is equal to 5RT divided by 3M R being the gas constant, M being the molar mass but that can be converted to K being the Boltzmann constant divided by M which is the uh, molecule mass so in that case we use K over M instead of using R, the gas constant, over big M whichever you like, prefer, I end up preferring of course using the gas constant and the molar mass because that's easier to work with mathematically. So now we're going to replace the escape velocity which is cubed by the quantity the square root of 5RT over 3M since it's cubed we now get this quantity to the 3 halves power we can include G because that's also the 3 halves power and then we still have 1 over the density to the 1 half power and now we have a nice neat equation describing the minimum mass the critical mass required for a gravitational collapse. Of course these are approximate values, there's a lot of other things going on, there could be quite a bit of motion, in that case you need more mass, if there's not a lot of motion you need less mass, so there's of course it's not an exact number but it gets us into the ballpark. So now I guess we need to go look at a numerical example to see how that actually works. So stay tuned and we'll now show you how to calculate either the minimum genes length or the minimum critical mass required for gravitational collapse.